The film opens in the world of Free City, a video game where players can take part in action-packed missions like spy jobs or bank robberies. The biggest players are the ones that wear sunglasses, as it gives them an advantage over other characters. Among the many non-player characters is Guy, a bank teller who enjoys his mundane and routine lifestyle. He works with his best friend, a security guard named Buddy, and they always have to play the part of helpless bank employees as they get robbed. Elsewhere in Free City is a sunglasses character called Molotov Girl, who is interrogating another player for info on an artifact she is searching for. Afterward, she walks near Guy and Buddy as they walk home. And Guy hears Mariah Carey's fantasy play as Molotov Girl walks past him. He comments on the song. Great day. Love that song. That's a new one. Which surprises her because she is used to hearing all the stock phrases each NPC has to say. Guy becomes smitten and follows after her but is hit by a train, sending him back to his home to relive everything. When Guy goes back to work, the robbery takes place, but Guy decides to do something different and tries to acquire the sunglasses of a robber, accidentally killing them with their own shotgun even as the player in the real world tries to take Guy down. He takes the sunglasses and leaves the bank. When he puts them on, he sees various parts of the game highlighted to show what they are there for, the bank for a robbery mission, for example. He finds that he can pick up health boxes to fix himself up, and he continues to literally see the world through new eyes. However, when he tries to change things like his regular coffee order, the other NPCs appear to get suspicious of Guy. Outside in the real world, Tsunami, the company behind Free City, catches wind of Guy's activities, thinking he is a hacker who used an NPC skin to take down other players. Two employees, Walter Keys McKee and Mouser go into the game as their avatars, a stripper cop and a pink rabbit, to confront Guy. They chase after him, but he got limited edition sneakers that provide him with high jumping skills. Guy tries to escape them by grabbing onto a wrecking ball, like a nope. but he misses and falls, saving himself with a bubble suit. However, Keys and Mouser find Guy and kill him. I'm never gonna die! And that was the heartbreaking story of Blue Shirt Guy. Thinking they have taken the hacker out for good. An interview is shown of Keys with Millie Rusk, as they were the masterminds behind Free City before Keys's current boss, Antoine stole their code and bastardized the game into his own thing to create a soulless franchise. Millie visits Keys and plans to get evidence of Antoine's crimes because she knows that proof of their code is hidden in a safe house inside the game, which she is trying to infiltrate while playing as Molotov Girl. Guy later finds Molotov Girl outside the safe house. What are we looking at? <laughs> Although he wants to join her in her mission and elsewhere, he cannot because he has a low level while she is at a higher level. The guy then starts taking on missions with the glasses and pulls off several heroic acts like returning stolen money and pulling kids away from traffic. Players in real life take notice and Guy soon becomes a viral sensation called Blue Shirt Guy, even appearing as an answer on Jeopardy. Guy tries to get Buddy to join him after stealing another pair of sunglasses, but Buddy thinks it's too dangerous. Antoine wants to keep Guy, who has become extremely popular among the players, despite Keys and Millie's plan to delete him. Antoine pressures the team to release Free City 2 in two days, even though the game is not fully coded and is still glitchy. He also informs Keys that the sequel is not backward compatible with the first game, which means that most of the characters won't return. As Guy reaches a high level in the game, he goes to the safe house, where Millie attempts to enter. She is almost killed, but Guy crashes through on a motorcycle and helps her fight off the villains. The two then hang out and eat bubblegum ice cream together. Guy surprises Millie by kissing Molotov Girl at the end of their date. Meanwhile, Keys notices something unusual about the codes of the NPCs in the game. He informs Millie that the barista character learned how to make a cappuccino through trial and error, and the blonde bombshell character wrote a book on gender roles after encountering Guy. This proves that Antoine stole Keys and Millie's code, and warns that the current world of Free City will be lost once the sequel launches. To bring Guy to the central hub where other players gather, Millie reveals to him that he is just a character in a video game. This realization causes Guy to lose his cheerful demeanor, and he goes to Buddy's house to talk about his existential crisis. Buddy tries to cheer him up by assuring him that the moment they are experiencing together is real. Buddy joins Guy in helping Millie obtain the file she needs. Guy's no-kill demeanor catches on with players, including popular streamers like Ninja and Pokemon. Antoine becomes angry and decides to reboot the server, hoping to eliminate Guy's influence. Just as Guy mentions that he has seen the island before, the game is rebooted, causing him to go back to before he became self-aware. Millie is able to log back onto the game, 
but Guy, the non-player character, NPC, she had developed feelings for, doesn't recognize her. In her desperation, she seeks out Keys for help. Keys explains that the character he created, which Guy is based on, is a lovelorn NPC always in search of his dream girl, and he only needs a trigger to restore his memories. Millie, disguised as her in-game character Molotov girl, decides to try to jog Guy's memory by kissing him. Her attempt is successful, and Guy remembers everything, including where he saw the island that he had been searching for. With the memory of the island's location restored, Keys deduces that it is just beyond the city's horizon. Millie and Guy then rally all the NPCs in Free City, encouraging them to migrate to the island and start living their own lives instead of simply following their programmed routines. As a result, all the NPCs leave, leaving the players confused. Antoine, the game's owner, discovers that Millie was involved in Guy's sudden change and orders Mouser, the game's antagonist, to permanently delete Millie and Guy. Mouser begins manipulating the game's environment to corner them, forcing Guy to try and drive them out of the city. The game's players around the world are following the saga with great interest. Keys intervenes and constructs a ramp to aid their escape, while the NPCs watch from a distance. As they flee, Millie begins to get deleted, and Keys constructs a bridge to help them cross. Antoine then unleashes his final weapon, Dude, a stronger and more imposing version of Guy, which is not yet fully completed. Buddy arrives to assist Guy. But the fight is intense, and Dude nearly defeats Guy. However, Buddy manages to throw him a pair of sunglasses that, what the shit? that allows Dude to see the world from Guy's perspective, giving Guy the upper hand. Guy and Buddy run towards the island, leaving Antoine behind to rage and destroy everything in the server room with an axe. This causes the city environment to begin disappearing. As they cross the bridge, Buddy is also deleted, but he expresses that he had the best day of his life, thanks to Guy. Guy manages to run fast enough to break through the barrier and reaches the island, which is revealed to both the NPCs and the real-world players. Millie arrives at the server room, which is almost completely destroyed, and makes a deal with Antoine to let her have the game's code while he retains the rights to the Free City name for future sequels and spin-offs. After the release of Free City 2, the sales are disappointing, and Antoine faces criticism from both the media and his colleagues. In response, Millie, Keys, and Mouser begin developing a new game called Free Life, which includes more detailed and expansive environments. Millie becomes more dedicated to the game, but in doing so, she realizes that she must break up with Guy. However, he takes it well and parts with her amicably. Later, Millie watches a video in which Keys explains that Guy's character was programmed to fall in love with Molotov Girl based on Keys' own love for Millie. Upon this realization, Millie goes to find Guy in the city, where they share a kiss. In the game, Guy and Dude have become friends. You seem... adjective. I'm great. You could put me down. But Guy misses Buddy. As it turns out, Buddy has been revived in the game, and the two friends reunite. Buddy asks if they should return to work, but Guy tells him that they are free to go wherever they want and do whatever they want. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment and let us know which film you want us to explore next. Take care.